The core of it is to tell authentic stories and to essentially bridge the gap between the diaspora and Africa. Of course, there are amazing things happening on the continent, especially here in Ghana. So today we have an amazing program. Um, we have really great practitioners in the field of marketing, in the field of all aspects of essentially industry that makes things happen. Um, so I will go ahead and start by introducing or asking our panelists to come up and essentially have a seat so we can start the discussion. Um, we're going to start with branding as opposed to marketing. Um, so if you could just bear with us for a bit, um, I'll ask the panelists to come to the stage. So on our panel, we will have um, Mr. Rodney Parko, Ms. Jamila Abdullahi Edu, and then I think we also have Sadiq. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I think that is where we are for today. So my seat is there, but if you don't mind, I'll just stand. You know, honestly, you guys are going to do most of the talking. Okay. Um, you guys have all the experience that essentially we're here to kind of learn and absorb and soak in. Um, so what I'll do is I'll ask you guys to go ahead and introduce yourselves and share with us uh, your business or essentially your journey and how you are. So we can start with you. Um, my name is Sadiq. Use Africa is about about music, lifestyle, and But 
Um, I think it's important to make the distinction between policy and politics tricks as we as we as we do it here in Ghana and other other African countries. Uh, because essentially policy is what determines a lot of things for all of us, what you eat, what you wear, whether you go to school here or somewhere else. And um, it's really us trying to highlight things uh, as we go along. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 different people in different um, spaces and industry, I have evolved to set up a, an agency of sorts. Um, I came together with a Sierra Leonean partner, Vicky Ramon, and we started an agency called Magic Unlimited. With Magic, we serve various customers along branding, uh, marketing, communication. Uh, we all have our different expertise, so obviously I come with the visuals, with the branding, uh, the creative direction, and we, again, just like Jamila said, try and give our voices to our people. So I have worked with a whole bunch of multinationals, and I kind of know how they perceive Africa. And it's very different to what we live and what we see uh, on a daily. And so we try and say, hey, I know that this is how you see it from where you come from, sitting in your you know, soft cushions and everything. But on the real side, on this side, this is how it is. And we, we, we try and give the companies that we work with an uh, authentic voice. And that's basically what we've been up to for, for two years now. So yes, it's a bit more than photography, but it's a lot of fun when it, when it, when it is. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm here to talk about branding with So, uh, before I proceed on that, just, I think that it's important we just have uh, next box. I don't know. How about that? And you can read the noise box. And also, that the work for training and still, I watch TV, but we and also work as director in Ghana. So, we understand how they project the brand, how they tend to get people to perceive the brand, uh, what kind of position they wanted, for instance. And so, for us, that was very, very important for us. And so, we spend a lot of time not only researching, but um, coming out with references. Um, I still sometimes go back to our initial work, for instance, and just smile at some of the work that we've done. We, we, scaled, we, we brought down a number of um, uh, reference images where we're trying to create the brand and the perception. Uh, we carved out our, our position in our tagline, which is to be, our tagline now is the new uh, name, the new number one name in the ever music, lifestyle and culture in Africa. Now, that tagline is our position, but also expresses our ambition eventually of where we want to go. And so, that all the things that we do is captured in that, including how our logo was created, the colors we chose. Um, we have, when you look at our brand, brand profile, for instance, we have about five slides dedicated to the audience. target audience, for instance, including key insights in where we can find them, who they are, their age difference, their demographics, and all of those things, you know. And so, having an understanding of them and how they see things and perceive things, we sort of found a way to work and position the brand in the ways we want them to see it. So, when you ask, if you ask us about 
what we think about branding. Essentially, it's perception and how we think about it for our audience to perceive our brand. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, um, so, yeah, unlike uh, Sajik, I didn't really do go and do some hardcore research on branding. Uh, I think my journey is a bit different because essentially it was a personal blog. So I would define branding as being identity. As definitely there's a big element of perception, but I think first and foremost it's identity. And then it's capturing the essence of a company, an organization, a person, um, and communicating that to a target audience. So for me, I started um, in 2007, as I mentioned, and what was captured on the blog at the time really reflected what was going on in my life. I was a student, an economic student, so a lot of the posts and articles and features on the platform were along those lines. I was also in the diaspora, so there were a lot of diaspora, Ghana, Africa relations issues on there. And I also traveled a lot, so some of those elements came on there as well. For me, when we decided to, when I decided to open up Circumspect, which was, I would say I decided in 2013 to open it up a bit and also to focus more I wouldn't say focus more, to make it more overt that I was focusing on Africa and Africans and not just Ghanaians, even though Ghana tends to be the larger audience. But what I needed to do was distance myself from the platform. So I went through a two-year period where I gradually made that separate essence of what circumspect would be. Um, obviously, there's also the logo, which is what they think brand new, they just think logo, and that's it. Definitely evolved like Jamila says beyond your logo and the colors and so on. Um, so, as much as you try and sit, tell an audience or your target market that, hey, I'm very happy, I'm yellow, look at me, it, it goes beyond that because they see your brand to be XYZ. So, I started off as a photographer, my brand was RQV. Um, it started off as really powerful visuals, but I knew from a, from a, from the get go that I wanted to be a lot more than a photographer. So it became the acronym RQB because I didn't want anyone to say that oh it's really powerful visuals. So I want Rodney to take the photos. I, I wanted to set up a studio and I wanted to employ people and train people so that I can send out photographers or videographers to your event and they can do the job. And so it became RQB. My colors were red and gray, and then, uh, so let me backtrack a bit. Before all of this, I was a one-man um, and I quickly realized that I needed to put up uh, uh, a system in place where it's not just me, because you get popular over social media, and then the, the demand for your services increases exponentially, and you cannot service everybody. So obviously there are people who are disappointed, and then it affects your brand. So your brand is not just, like I said, the colors of the logo, because over time then you realize that, hold on, when people hear your brand name, RTV, they're thinking, oh, you're not going to get your photos early, you're not going to get your photos at all, things like that. It, it, it quickly became what people perceive of you, as opposed to what you want people to see you as. And so you have to do a lot of work in branding and don't take it for granted and think it's something that you can do at the end. For in Jamila's case, because she was evolving the platform, it made sense because it was moving from a personal blog to something that you had different contributors and so on. And for I'm, I'm very impressed that you did all the insights and things. But that's how that's how business should be run, as opposed to people like like me who do it on the fly and then we fix it as we go along. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting Like when you look at the way branding has evolved over the time. Um, and then also now there are a lot of people doing the same kind of things that we're all doing. So because of competition, you cannot afford to take certain things for granted. Way before you come out, like Sadiq said, 
do your homework, put in the work, and then tell the people we are about X, Y, and Z. This is what we do. And then don't leave it and think that they would automatically buy into it. You actually have to make the sale every time to say that. I said this is what we do, and this is what we do, because we are doing it. And if you have an issue with it, please come and tell me. And I'll convince you that, yes, we are doing it, or we'll fix what it is that you think we're not doing properly. So it goes, it goes a bit beyond just like the logo and the colors. Um, branding is something that is constantly evolving. I always say that, um, as a person, you wouldn't go to a, a business meeting when the job is. It's kind of like that with the company. When you first start to start off, you're not going to just go away in the end. You're just going to present something. You do the work, and then you wear your tie, and then you go out. That's the same way you want people to see your company. Right? It's, a, it's a serious organization. It's a, you put up the front. That makes people think that, oh, I, I should. I should put my time, invest my time in this, or give you my money because you seem to be about the business. And it's, it's basically that, making people buy into what it is you're selling. Very good. Thank you very much for that insight. So I'm just going to kind of piggyback on what you said, Rodney. Um, you kind of just went into it. But the next thing is, I, I call my quote, so a brand is a promise but a good brand is a promise kept, right? So you spoke a little bit about making sure you do what you say, making sure the person's experience is in alignment with what you promised, with what you spoke about. Um, however, let's you know be honest. As a, as a startup or as an entrepreneur, sometimes you do have those experiences where you're short staffed that, which is very um, realistic and happens, how would you advise our future entrepreneurs and current entrepreneurs who essentially are striving to keep that brand promise but fall short? How do they come back? It's not, it's not, it's not the thing to do to come back from, I guess, disappointment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get back. <laughs> <laughs> so, not happening. If, if uh, they appreciate that more than anything else. So you tell them that I, I did read it. To, I had a few people who were there with, uh, like drive people to an event and I would have to stay with them to make sure that things were done the way I wanted it done. And it, it just got tasky because you have the regular business that you do. You can't stay up all night because a lot of these urban events go on forever. And I didn't have the team around me to you know, put in the work. So at, at some point, I'm like, you know what? I like this dream, keep the dream, but pause it. And then, because life happens. Even though you're dreaming, life is happening. And the dream is not going to sustain your your life. So you do the things that way, right, and then you pray that the muses of the world come into existence. And then when you can, you say, hey, this is what I wanted to do, so have it all. <laughs> and then you push people to do it. So, it's, it's not the easiest thing, but you have to be honest with yourself and you have to be honest with the clients. When you're falling short, speak to whoever it is you're supposed to be about to. And then hopefully they will empathize and then give you the time. And then you also promise and then you know that you either go back on what you're done or you So essentially what I took away from you is A, communication is key. Communication is key and it's essential to be proactive and not reactive as in anticipating areas where you might fall short and then communicating with your clients about that. Um, Jamila, do you want to add anything more to that? Yeah, um, so I, I definitely agree with uh, Rodney. A lot of it is expectation management, honestly, that's what it is. If you make your projections and you figure out that you're going to fall short, then you should have already anticipated that that could possibly happen and know what you will do in that event, right? So um, the other thing is, as a startup, you have certain liberties. Take advantage of it. The fact that you are producing water 
and um, producing water and supplying, okay, you plan to supply at least 50 hotels with your water. But you started and now you're, you're supplying 10 hotels with that water. It does not mean that you should try to get all those 50 in the same year, right? So it's a question of staggering your goals across a period of time and realizing that you are the one making the rules, right? There was this sport, no, it was Fast Company. There was an article on Fast Company that I read a few months ago. And it was about a, an entrepreneur who started um, a beauty line for black Americans, African Americans specifically. That was his target market. And they were asking him, so you, he got all of this funding from so many different places. So he had more money than he had anticipated, right? And so they were saying, now you have all of this money, and you have all of these people who have heard about your product, some of them who have tested it, and they can't wait to get it. So what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to meet that demand? And he said, when I started this company, I told myself and I told my staff that I was going to prioritize their health and their well-being. And so that is still going to be the case. I am focused on producing quality products. So the fact that there is a certain demand there doesn't mean that I should shift what the essence of my company is. And I think that's what a lot of us do, where we have our ideas and we have our, our mission and our vision, and then things come out of the, you know, from the side and then we immediately switch course. And that's, that becomes the problem because you're telling people that we're, we're going to always give you original content, well-researched content, but because now there's so many people who are putting out content, you decide to go for whatever is making the news, or you decide to go for you know the, those, those topics that you know will draw the numbers. But what you told people was, we're going to guarantee that when you read our pieces, they're going to make you think. So what does that do? You might get new people, but your original audience is going to leave eventually. Especially if you're in business. And I think that's what I'm also learning as someone who is um, what's called former where you have to hard ball things, but you need to keep your S what distinguishes you from A, A from B. Not just the perception, right? So you need to stay true to those elements and know that here in Ghana, across Africa, we have so much opportunity. Coming back, you know, realigning. We initially wanted to start that as a pay TV platform with a platform. It was a very working, I mean, like the first, and then concentrate fully on them. Uh, we were supposed to have been funded by a group called K3. And so K3 was a travel play service um, brand in Sweden. So they were supposed to have launched the K3 platform in Africa, but eventually the whole plan couldn't come on and all that. But at that time, I already left Barsat, and so there was no turning back for me. And so we decided to look at it again and scale back. And then we started to pay attention to things that we could take advantage of and then go from there. So that's how come we ended up as a channel sitting on someone's channel, which in this case was Barsat and then Dry um, Time. And I also know that at a point in time, because I mean, starting off and supplying different 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 TV shows every day for seven days. It's not easy. It's really not easy when you don't have when you, when you don't have the, the team like Randy mentioned earlier and the squad to you know really put together um, quite compelling content to sit into your you know to tumble. It's been very difficult but we scaled back. Now this is where we communicated to a lot of the connectors. There's a point where we got to Vasa and Joy Practice and we told them that they said, you know what? Honestly we can't you know give you this kind of show, that's better to do. And then, you know, when we came, when we, when we scaled back that way, and we were able to sell to this one. So then what we decided to do now was that, now we're selling uh, specific shows to specific clients. We changed our own um, sales agenda. The initial plan was to go and sell the whole block. So if you go to MT and say, well, I have this block, so uh, what's it called? Vasa.
enjoy having. This is the what the, the type of content and this are the audience I'm trying to target and all of that. And these are my ratings. So you can you know take it. But we decided to we, we changed it and I started to build specific shows for specific events. And so now when we're able to create a show and we're able to align it to a particular client to be successful, we will bring it back. That's what we're doing. We'll bring it back. We kept on doing that for a while. And you know, so most importantly, we're communicating to partners uh, when we could it, and then secondly, we were realistic enough to scale back. But one of the things that really kept us in check and in line was the fact that we had a very, we had a, we had a, we had a roadmap and a, and a document. That particular document on the brand and what we can compromise on really kept us in check because then anyone we were trying to scale back, we had to go back to say, okay, and. Um, Okay, this is it. Um, this is what we wanted to do. So, okay, cool. We can't do this. So, we have to do this. You know, and a lot of opportunities come. I know how, for instance, there's a new um, cable platform in Africa that's coming. They saw some of our content across uh, Tanzania. They really liked it, and when they saw it, they thought that oh, maybe this guy's in the channel. So they contacted the, the guys. They came to us. It was a very, very. I mean. very well and then you have to be able to solid document it guides you even when you want to one pager that yes has it's informed interactive inspired and Essentially, there is, yes, the look and feel color association. There is the promise that you said that you're going to do and the experience that you're... Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the technology wants us to know that it is. <laughs> okay, so um, he really breaks down the importance of finding the essence of your, your company or whatever idea it is you have for But if your competition is taking money, I say no. We don't take money. If your video fits our bill, if it fits into our positioning and what we intend to do, we'll play. We've had a lot of them coming like that, but these are some of the things we just can't compromise. It's our tagline, it expresses our offering. The audience who are, we are targeting are really looking forward to it. We don't want to keep them disappointed and we are sticking to that. Amazing. So it sounds like you could even use your tagline as your roadmap as well. It keeps you in alignment. It lets your customers, your clients know what to actually expect. And especially when people try to come to you with different, I guess, ideas, um, if it does not fit into that, that can also help you. So I guess that's something that we can also note or also tweet. Um, have a tagline, take the time, research it, really figure out, you know, meditate, figure out what exactly your brand is promising and what you're actually doing um, and, and actually put that down so that you yourself, the company itself, can have um, some type of a roadmap. Really quick pause, um, housekeeping rules, uh, the vehicles of the above numbers, of the numbers has to be parked well, GN9259-12 and BR886-13. Again, cars with the license plate GN9259-12 and BR886-13. Okay, Rodney, really quick if you can. So like I said before, my company is Magic Unlimited, and we're a small team, but we, we do big things. So our tagline is simply believe in magic. Uh, it sounds very generic, but it, it, it inspires us to do more than we can, and then it also tells our clients that, hold on, they may be small, but try them. Yeah, you make magic happen. So yeah, believe in magic. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, great. So we are a bit pressed for time. 
Um, we'll take maybe one or two questions from the audience, um, and then we'll transition into the next phase of our program. So any questions, any burning questions? Okay, that's, okay, sure. So, thank you so much for the wonderful insights. My name is Timothy Kutin. Uh, I have a question. So there was a recurring theme in your presentations, and that was know who you are, be true to yourself, and don't um, sort of pander to your audience. But at the same time, I also know that many successful businesses have talked about listening to your audience and letting your audience guide you. And sometimes that means pivoting from your original mission or your original business focus. So how do you find that balance? How do you determine when to listen to your audience and decide that, you know, what is what this is where the business looks to be coming from, so I need to posi reposition myself, and when to stay true to your original mission and mission. Thanks. Um, I, I totally agree with you. You definitely have to listen to your audience and factor that into your planning and your, your operations. How do you balance it out? I think if you make, if you put in place mechanisms to allow your audience to give you that feedback, then it's already part of what you do. Too many businesses get up and do things and forget that at the end of the day, it's the client, the reader, the customer that matters. And that's really it, because without the customer, without that client and customer, you probably wouldn't exist. Without, that re without the number of readers that we have, I probably would have just kept it a personal blog with a password and give it to very specific people, right? So that's the reality. So you need to keep that in mind. And, and the other thing is, thinking about if you about a video project, you can ask them, we have these three ideas, which ones would you like to see? Now it does two things for you. It helps you connect with your audience directly, Number two, it helps you engage with your audience and it helps you get a sense of what the market wants. So Ghanaian companies don't really do that. They come, they forget that they're even giving you a service, and they forget that your experience is what counts. It's no longer, I think there's, there's a shift going on, it's no longer about product. If you haven't realized that yet, I'm telling you today, it's no longer about product. It's about experience. It's about experience. That's why even news agencies whose product is the news, now have to find time or create platforms on social media and actually interact with your audience. Because if the, if the audience's experience isn't ideal for them, then there's a problem somewhere. Uh, there's a recent episode that I had written about with regards to the airport, Kotoka International Airport, and um, I put out uh, the article and it's been going around, and just yesterday I got a comment from supposedly the person, the company that manages parking. And this guy says whatever he wants to say, but he doesn't answer any of my questions, right? He says, no, there was no bribery in this case, what, what, what. And I said, but do you see all the comments from all of the people who are sharing the exact same experience? That should tell you that there's something missing here. Now, this is a case of someone who won't listen, right? But here, what if this was literally free research that we did for him because everybody's telling you that they've seen this over and over again. And if you, you're, you're a company, I think you also need to be flexible, right? So you might want to give information on entertainment, but it might end up being that it's when you talk about social issues that your audience really reacts. And that means there's a need there and starting a business is about solving a problem, right? That's why I say you always have to keep coming back to what is the essence. And if at a, a point in time, dynamics in the industry or whatever change, and you have to pivot, then take the time to do that. Do surveys, do, do customer surveys, or just talk to people and say, hey, so what do you think about it? You don't need to tell them that you're the one who started the company. If anything, I'd even say, you know, just randomly talking to people will give you insights about the perception of your company. They might not tell you the truth when they know that, oh, Emmanuel works at Habakkuk. But if they don't know that Emmanuel works at Hubbard Cry and he asks them, they'll more likely be honest with him about what they actually think. 
Sure. Sure. Not to sound, I mean, a big competition. Now, who said that you can't actually scale back in? Excuse me, be able to still give your audience what you want to do. Now, let's tell you our story of what we did, for instance. There was a point where we didn't have production equipment and cameras and everything. I was actually taking it from a friend to do some of the productions and everything and all of that. And there got to a time where we needed to still do productions and we didn't have the resources. Now, we sat down, we brainstormed, and that actually led us to start filming with mobile phones, Samsung. So we went to Samsung and sold an idea to them to say, well, we are trying to start our news, news, news uh, shows and all of that. And all we need is that we need devices. Give us some of your devices, we'll film it, we'll package it, we'll put it on TV and on our online platform. So all you need to do is we'll just brand and give you the publicity and shops and all. Um, eventually they couldn't come on board, but we were able to get one Samsung um, X6 Galaxy Plus and we will be filming our news shows with that for instance. And I think two weeks or a week ago, somebody just notified me and told me that, oh, you know the thing that you guys are, somebody from Samsung, you know the thing that you guys have started and are doing, MTV base is doing something similar. Well, maybe it's their yeah, plan anyway and all of that, but it goes to show that you still can scale back and you know, still you wait and still give your audience what they want. I mean, we still give them the content. In any case, this is the content they into and, and what to call engage with anytime online and all of that. So it's no problem. And as far as you do it very well, your branding is in point, your editing and all of that is in point. You still can give it to them wherever they are on TV, online, wherever you can find them. So you can still scale back and still be able to give your audience what you want. Thank you. Um, there is a Nissan Sentra and Toyota Venza. Those are the two cars. So again, um, they need to be parked well. Uh, it's the second time the message has come, so kindly park your car well. Again, Nissan Sentra and Toyota Venza. Um, kindly uh, handle that. Thank you. Um, all right, so... I know we're pressed for time, but yes. all I would say is Timothy, um, if you're a starter, are in a very, very good position, you're small. I mean, hopefully you have a lot of clients, but if you don't, the key clients that you have, like Jim Miller said, is they're always key to have interaction with them. Because they will tell you things that you do well and the things that you don't. Mind you, not all your feedback may be constructive, and not all your feedback may be in line with what you still to, to, to. It's up to you with what you take on from the feedback. But definitely, we are not by any means saying don't listen. Because if you don't listen, you're going to fall off like the real quick. Thank you so much to our panelists. At this time, we're going to just ask you guys to give them a round of applause for all of your insights. Of course, um, really quick, if you can just let the, uh, the audience know how to follow you. Uh, Alright, so for us on Twitter, it's Muse underscore Africa. On Facebook, it's Muse Africa. On Instagram, it's Muse Africa, M-U-S-E Africa. On Snapchat, it's Muse um, Africa. Sorry, on TV, you can catch our blogs on Barca every day. Um, between 4 to 5, Monday to Friday and Saturday, 1 to 2. And on Enjoy Prime, you can catch us every day, my one, 1 to 12 to 1. Yeah. So the website is circumspect.com. There's an E at the end of the circumspect. And on pretty much all the platforms, circumspect underscore. So it's Magic Unlimited, and our Unlimited is N U L T D. So it's magic and almost everywhere. I'm, I'm dyslexic this morning. <laughs> UNLT. <laughs> and uh, we do everything except Facebook and Snapchat. Snapchat, that's my domain. <laughs> so yeah, there's Ronnie Kwaku for everything else. For, in case you want to follow my photography or well, lack thereof, because I don't shoot that much. And there's a mistake on the program. So J after light, it's A B D U L A I, not U before. <laughs> All right.
my beautiful, the publicist in me has to make sure you guys got that information and make sure you guys are related to the public. Okay, now, before we go to the, oh, <laughs> this is a selfie moment. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, before we go to our second panel, of course we said we have a multi, or even a dynamic program for you guys. So before we go to the second panel, we're going to talk about some opportunities that exist um, we're going to, first of all, thank you and miss you guys. <laughs> Very good. Um, yes, so we have a dynamic program and it's not about imparting, it's not only about imparting information, sharing um, our experiences, but it's also about connecting you guys and making sure you get some options, right? So to I'm all of um, the chart the Embassy of France in Ghana, Miss Caroline Delassi, please come to the stage and speak to us about the opportunities that exist with the French Embassy. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm here because France is very keen to develop some opportunities and all the beginning startups in the tech ecosystem. Entrepreneurs here are very dynamic and. In and so, friends, and uh, there's some money. We want to apply, and uh, we really like to see some Ghanaian startups uh, in France and uh, to develop some links with you. Because you see, when we talk French, we see food, we see fashion, we see a lot of things, but we don't first think about tech. But the tech and the system in France is very dynamic, and we want to build bridges, and uh, we want to build bridges with Africa, West Africa, and Ghana. And uh, for example, Paris uh, will, uh, will open the biggest incubator in the world uh, next January and uh, next year at the Alfresina, and more than a thousand startups uh, will be hosted there. So that shows how we want to, to, to develop some, some relationships well, all of the tech ecosystem, entrepreneurs ecosystem in the world, and uh, especially, uh, especially in Africa and West Africa. So you are all welcome, and uh, we would like also if you if you have ideas, don't hesitate to talk about it to us. So we like entrepreneurs here in Ghana, and uh, to tell us if you have ideas, if you want to develop some projects, because we are very interested. In uh, in fact, we, we visited a lot of incubators here in, uh, in Accra, so in fact, we, we went here, uh, also the others, and we, we have seen how Ghanaian entrepreneurs are dynamic, they are motivated to, to do something, to create uh, new ideas, and so we thank you and really don't hesitate to, to talk to us. So I hope some, some of you will try to the French Tech tickets because it's a great opportunity for you and also you will uh, you can be eligible to the French resident permit. You, you, the price is uh, 45,000 euros, so it's a lot of money. And you, you will be hosted in great incubators and you, you, you can have some courses, you can have some, uh, some mentors which are very important and, and I think you, you, you can develop very interesting things and uh, very interesting uh, relationships. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Caroline. Okay, so another aspect of our program in, involves a pitch, actually. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hear from three entrepreneurs, or three companies, essentially, that um, are here today, and they are going to take about four to five minutes to pitch. They'll tell us all about their uh, company and essentially what they are doing. So. The first one I'm going to call up is Chalkboard. Please come to the stage. Thank you. Um, well, there are also uh, French startups in Ghana. Just watching <laughs> the boss um, Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Adrien Bouillot. I'm the founder and CEO of Chalkboard Education. Uh, I arrived here a year ago, more or less. Chuckboard uh, uh, tried to solve one main problem. Um, it's basically the fact that 92% uh, of the people on this continent don't have access to university. It's a big problem. It's even a bigger problem when you know that it's actually very easy to 
to bring a solution. Here in Ghana, for instance, you might not be aware that 60,000 people every year are enrolled to the university. They pass the test, they, they are welcome, but the family can't get inside just because of technical problems. Basically, they don't have the money to live on the campus or they don't have the time or whatever reason. So, with Sharpen Education, we are working um, on an application that works on any mobile and without internet connection that allows any university, any NGO, any corporate to do e-learning or training to anybody in Ghana or in West Africa. It works everywhere. It works uh, uh, with SMS and USSD, so you, you don't, have to do, you don't even have to hold the smartphone if you want to follow the class. We are based here in Impact Up. Um, we're an international team. There's myself, there's Mio, that is taking a picture of me right there uh, from Madagascar, and Ali just behind Portugal. And we are now hiring uh, people. We are hiring a CTO, somebody who will be in charge of the development of the product. He will be leading a team that is based partly in Ghana and partly in France. And uh, we are hiring our next intern. Uh, that will help me on perfection and business development. That's really, really good missions, that's paid jobs, and we are uh, really looking forward to meet some uh, Ghanaian people to fulfill those jobs. Thank you very much. Okay, um, next up we'll have Swift Law. Looks like these um, presentations also involve opportunities. For um, local government, yes. Swift Law, Sam. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Samuel Nabla Badu, and I am a co founder of Swift Law. Now, Swift Law is an online legal platform in Ghana uh, that allows its users to register a company or a trademark um, simply by going onto our website and filling out one form, and in a week, uh, your company would have been registered. Now, let me tell you a bit about why we started Swift Law. Um, I trained as a barrister in the UK, um, and close to five years ago, I came back to Ghana to commence my legal practice. And one of the things I was struck by was how something that was seemingly simple could take weeks or months and months to complete. And in particular, what jumped out at me was, you know, registering companies. And so, I looked at the Register General's department and the amount of corruption, the misinformation, and the delay at the Register General's department made you know, it an entirely cumbersome affair to register a company. And so that's why Swift Law was born. Actually, let me backtrack. You could actually go to a law firm to register your company, but minimally, they will charge you no less than $1,500 to sidestep this. And that's why Swift Law was born. Uh, it's for people who don't have $1,500 to register a company. You can register a company with 1,000 CDs. I mean, it's for the SMEs and entrepreneurs. Um, it's really to empower you know, the, the African youth who really don't have uh, access to credit or any money in their pocket. So uh, yeah, that's what Swift Law is about. It's www.swiftlaw.co. Hello everyone. I'm sorry, I, I have to come up to um, give you the apology for our keynote speaker. Nanapa um, Mibiriakou, he called to say that his younger brother passed on. Yeah, um, so he's going to the United States this morning. But he just sent us his keynote speech, and if you wouldn't mind, if it's okay by you, we can play it uh, just about seven minutes, ten minutes. Is that okay? All right. Thank you. So kindly bear with us as we uh, just load this up for you. Oh, 
we all check on the like, I'm from God, I'm not from the scenario. I feel like. Say well, these people are qualified. 
Um, online, we also stopped um, because Google was becoming too expensive for us. Uh, but we found, you know, when we asked people, when we asked our students, how did you find out about us? What brought you here? They will always say, my colleague told you. Yes. My colleague told me. So you ask a cohort of 30 people, 100 people, and if more and more tell you all the time that this is how we got here, then I was just dashing money to Google, so we stopped. Um, in terms of advertising being cheap in Ghana, that is really, really so true. Um, there's no way I would contemplate advertising in the press in Kenya. It's just a no-no. I wouldn't even think about it. So I think um, um, I didn't realize that that could, that could be affecting um, your sector. Um, at the same time, I would say that it is still way, way, way cheaper to still advertise online than it is to do it offline. I think uh, maybe we should speak afterwards, but there's a lot you can do that you can do via Facebook. So for, for the startups who would not have money in context to or to spend offline, even if you don't, that whatever it is that you opt to provide to the marketplace, do it the very, very best way that you can. Nothing else can guarantee your success. You can advertise all you want. If your offering is crap, you will win the customer today and lose them tomorrow. All right, our business thrives on repeat customers, not on those ones who just come in, try and get they will leave. All right, so just make sure that from the very beginning, just make sure you deliver the very best services. Now, if you feel that you still need to promote yourself, then you need to speak with people like I tell because they will teach you how to write content about your product and your service, which you can distribute almost through your network online. All right, so content marketing, we say the customer is a king, but now queen. So I'm very, very delighted that she's here today. <laughs> right, I'm very delighted that she's here today because, because, because with that, you could promote your business. People will find it easier to read about what you have to offer. All right, I mean, I, I have just paid a lot of money for something um, in the last couple of days. And that's because of something I read about them. All right, no amount of advertising could have made me pay that money. No could have made me pay. But through content marketing, I was able to read about them, I was able to read about other people's experiences, all right, with this organization, and that was what they did for me. That was it. All right, so you can do online PR yourself, otherwise you'll speak with her, and she might be able to help you. Thank you. That was, so the takeaway, thank you, Mr. Pencil, was word of mouth. And the way that that works in your benefit is to deliver tip top service. So really quick, your, your, well, we know your favorite is online, but you can go ahead and reiterate. Yeah, I think that, I mean, like uh, Chris will say that word of mouth is, is his favorite, but that's really what social media is, right? Social media is for blogging um, and content market, that's what they're, they're doing, you know, to, to say, hey, check out this product, I use it, and, and it's great. So they, that's, that's how uh, blogging kind of fits them. You know, to make math, not just be one of them. Because that's slow, but then, slow. you know, <laughs> but then to, to say, okay, word of mouth, being, um, coming from Kaiser, coming from Janela, coming from different bloggers, writing about this product. You know, and they, they, they with their audiences, like, oh, we trust Janela, she writes a lot, and she writes good content, we trust what she writes. And that's really what content marketing is. Now, to answer her question about how to price or how to get brands, I have worked with a uh, blogging guy. What my own and if you didn't take notice of that, and I think that's just very good examples of low cost effective strategies that you can adopt. Um, and it comes back to one thing staying relevant to your customers. Okay, so to sum up with some examples um, one, add content, add value when you do marketing. Um, I think a good example is the Blog Camp 16 campaign. We have our Blog Camp conference tomorrow, Saturday. We're not just saying come to the Blog Camp. We're saying Jamila will be there. Here's a link to her blog. Kaiser will be there. Here's a link to her blog. She writes about this and about that. So we're sharing content, which is maybe useful to people who would like to read more again in blogs. It's actually possible to find. As we heard about uh, is changing, people might be looking for you. Make sure they can find you. <laughs> At the very, very least, a Facebook page. So that's everybody who has a business should set it up today if you haven't. And on there, you should phone number. I found that to be very important uh, in Ghana. People want to call you and find out stuff. 
So um, at the very least, mm -hmm. Facebook page and phone number. Uh, and the third tip is kind of continuing on the word of mouth issue. Make sure that every interaction you have is growing a customer, creating a backer, somebody who will uh, talk about you and your company. Um, it can be personal interactions. Let them know what you do. Give them your card. Talk about your website. Um, it can be customers, of course, uh, but also people who complain. The people who complain, they're invested in some way. If, if people don't complain, um, that's useful. So. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. And it actually sounds like some of our panelists spoke about uh, PR strategies uh, in reference to optimizing articles, um, you know, plugging in a pl plugging in a product or a service in an article, making sure those hashtags are in there, optimizing what you actually write. And of course, if you guys want to learn more about PR or lead services, Ford Communications is here for you. You can follow us on Instagram. Now, to transition to the audience. Um, I will stop my question asking here and open the floor up to you guys. If there's any burning questions, please raise your hand and let us know so that our lovely panelists can uh, address your, your questions. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Sherry Thompson number of companies. <laughs> I had three kids and I'm having three companies. Um, you were the one that uh, spoke about the process. Um, what I find for SMEs is that we have a tendency to... Sales is a very different problem. And I, what I would like to say to you all is separate that. In, in the States we do. Marketing is a process that identifies who your customer is, how to approach your customer, how you build that customer. That's marketing. Sales is basically how you sell your service your, from the beginning of the sale and what you do all the way through to get them to commit. We call it the close, but I, sometimes I rather call it the commitment. It's like a marriage. How do you get them to marry you, you know, and to keep that marriage going for the rest of your life? There can be divorce, yeah? I think blogging down is single. <laughs> <laughs> and single is fine, single is fine. But again, that sales process is definitely important. It's courting, it's dating, it's... it's They're too scared to take off, you know, that proverbial ceiling and say, you know what, um, I really can't do this. Um, so what is it that limits people um, and what it is that allows some people to just get up and run? You know, it starts from within. You know, so I think it's a big deal. Um, we'll probably need a different um, 
address house meeting to explore that. Um, but for me personally, when we when we're going to start Simon Page uh, eight years ago, um, it was never ever in my mind it was never meant to be a one country operation. That was my mentality. It wasn't meant to be. Um, it wasn't designed to be. You know, from the very outset. So that was how I saw it. But if you see it as being this small, it will remain that small. It's just the way it is. So, so it is a, um, from my experience, I think it is a big deal. You can't achieve what it is that you don't think about. Thank you. So um, the way I'm thinking about it, I'm sitting here, hmm, what's the role of psychology? And I'm thinking, I, I think everything has to do with politics, rather. And why do I think that? That's because that's my first degree. So it's psychology is <laughs> your first degree. <laughs> is it? No, actually, my first degree is management, but I, 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 I'm actually studying performance psychology uh, towards a PhD level, and, and that's, that's where mm -hmm. I'm coming to help people. Uh -huh. so, so I think that the learning from that is it's good to work in teams, because people see the world in different ways, and then you can have a better outcome. Maybe I would see the political aspects. When we work together, you would see the psychology True. would reach higher heights of African success. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. And to add on to that, I mean, psychology essentially is really embedded in. It's embedded in every single thing you do. So even going to the branding, there is color association. There is um, there are emotions that are evoked when you use a certain color in your branding. The typography. What kind of language do you use? Are you you know typing to people in all caps? How does that come off? How do you speak to someone when they're upset? You know, do you use voice control when you are responding? All of those things are psychological in in nature. Um, so I also want to encourage you guys to also think about that aspect. Every single thing you do, how will it be received? What's the receiving end like? So, you know, just be mindful that you can't just move. Everything must be intentional and also have strategy behind it. Um, so, of course, I think we can sit here and talk all day. Like, this is a really good conversation. Thank you so much for your time to the panelists. Let's give them a round of applause. did not hear from our, I will say, beloved, Emmanuel Kamor, but he is here, yes, and um, we're just going to have him come up and speak to us a bit about, um, well, you'll, you'll introduce him and, and, and let us know, but ladies and gentlemen, let's come up and let us know. Please, another round of applause for the panelists. Kaiza, Wendy, Lenny, and Prince, thank you guys so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, okay. <laughs> Can you please indulge me? Everybody, please stand up. Briefly, please. Please. Thank you very much. We'll start with our left feet. Please start shaking. Left. Yes. Right feet. Shake it. Left hand. Shake. Yes. Right hand. Those of you who are old enough or young enough to do a bottom shake, shoulder. <laughs> and then, yes. Awesome. And then please, slowly but carefully, just rotate your neck. Clockwise. You don't have to look at my watch. Clockwise. <laughs> Out to clockwise. Slowly. Please don't hurt yourself. If you have any pain, please, I'm not responsible. Don't practice if you do. Awesome. Please have a seat. Thank you very much. Awesome. So this leads me into a bit of... Um, what I do here. My name is Emmanuel, and I am director of, well, digital and design innovation. A couple of big words that say that I help make events and things we do here sexy. Um, so in terms of design thinking, how do we engage with people a bit more? Uh, how do we collaborate and how do we have a bigger impact? And with digital, kind of what the people here said. Um, how do we amplify a lot of the message um, on so many other things that we do here outside? Um, so Impact Hub, you guys are welcome. You've seen the beautiful space, those who are connected. We do quite a number of things. Uh, but we're a enabler of progress. Uh, we really try to make the space and the resources we have uh, promote everything that entrepreneurs are doing, businesses are doing, um, so that we all have a common goal of success. So if that sounds great to you, please visit us at any point in time. We're always excited to have you. Um, another thing that we, I try to do is innovation. So innovation is another fancy big word is do better the next time. Do better the next time. 
And we've hosted quite a number of these, and one of the things that um, I have a privilege, and a round of applause to Tom and the planning group. And Tom, please. He's so stressed, he has this game face on, but again, I just wanted to take time to acknowledge um, him and the team and what they've done in partnership with us. But one of the things that we were also talking about is how do we make this panel session a bit different? And we go to panel sessions, people come, they speak, but then towards the end, your brain kind of like fizzles out. And so we decided, okay, uh, with what we have, how do we switch the session? So my session now is to ask you guys, uh, pop quiz, what did you learn from today? Chatty! Nice. <laughs> See how that works? Um, nice. Anybody want to? Okay, no, I won't embarrass anybody, but actually there are studies that go that if you sat down for more than sometimes 45 minutes to an hour, and you just listened to information, and you haven't practiced it, you forget. So most of the wonderful things that these people, the panelists have shared today, most of you probably, unless you go on Twitter and look at the hashtag, would forget a lot of the key parts. Um, so my job in the next, and I promise it won't be more than 10, 5 to 10 minutes, is to go over some of the interesting things that have been said, but I'm putting it in context of, for each of you that are here, what's next? You've come to this session, you drove here, you know, breakfast, you get to network, but what's really next, right? <laughs> awesome. I'll start with personal branding. Uh, the keynote speaker, Frank Bediaco, used the video, and one of the things that he said, I don't know how many of you caught it, besides the, the uh, wonder states and the beautiful things he's doing, the first thing he spoke about was personal branding. Uh, anybody want to raise their hand why that's important? You can, or you can just shoot it out, sorry, I'm not a lecturer. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> you can just say, what, say, if anybody has it, just say it. Because you're the best person to sell your brand. Because you are the best person to sell your brand. That is why personal branding is important. Why do you want to sell your brand? Anybody? Just shoot a quick question out there. A quick answer. Yes? All right, I'll dial back. You guys have ideas, businesses, all that awesome things. We're always looking for money. What I'll submit to you is most of the time, people are not investing in your idea. They're investing in you. People are not investing in your idea. They're investing in you. Ideas come and die and dust. If you go to the grid, they are paint, just pull a hat out. Right? So why would maybe two people, similar ideas, somebody would get support, somebody would get funding, and they'll get execution, but not you. And that, that goes back to who are you, and why should I trust in you, give you money, or support you? And it's personal branding. Dumb it down to regular speak. Every time you meet somebody, the first couple of seconds, they assess you. How you look, how you speak, what do you sound like, are you intelligent enough? Would you waste their time or not? For the single gentlemen, women do this to us all the time. <laughs> for the beautiful women, as soon as you walk in, I submit to you, especially the single men, I don't talk about a married one. I'm not married yet, so I can't speak to the experience. But we've all assessed every single one of you subconsciously. We do that in our personal life, but it also has to work in our professional life. Personal branding is important. What I'm saying to you is, you don't have to be a copy of anybody else, but you have to understand and ask yourself, who am I, and what am I portraying to the world? If you're able to answer, one, who am I, then you can look and be introspective and say, who I think I am, if somebody comes and meets me and the person leaves, would they get that impression of who I am when they've left? So before we get into this big idea, yes, I have an idea, I want money, I have all of that, let's do a bit of homework. Ask yourself these questions. Who am I, and am I able to project that when I meet people? Personal writing is key and important. That goes also on to a bit of what I do. So digital, I love online. Uh, started by playing with tinkering with computers a long time ago. Well, in my head is small, I'm not that old. But even more so, I started like joining online communities back in the high five. MySpace. Yeah, MySpace days. Instant messaging was what? Yeah. Before Yahoo then AOL. AOL. Those of you, okay, Eve. sorry. Yeah, so I'm making myself sound like I'm, no, I'm a Kankwe boy. <laughs> I still went to internet cafes, but I was so excited about the internet back in the day. But one of the things that I've realized is that it's, it's changed considerably, right? And some people feel overwhelmed by it. And in my line of work, you talk to older people, you talk to younger people, hey, internet's waiting, and what happens? Uh, so am I able to keep my privacy, this, that, and the third? Yes, there are lots of debates and arguments on the higher level, right? But for all of you, that conversation and argument about where I can be online or I cannot be online, that boat has passed. There's a version of you that is already online. Those of you who are not on Facebook or on Twitter, whether you're on it or not, I tweeted about you. 
So it goes back to that question, personal branding, who I am, who did you project? Because whether you share the story or not, some